Dennis George Raffield, R A W F I E L D, or R A F Field, whichever <laughs> way you want to look at it, <laughs> and uh, uh, born in Norwood. Only the only day of the year I could have been born on, April first, nineteen twenty-six. We used to go to Empire Day up on the airfield, 1935. Um, and actually there is a picture I've got, you know, I can see my father. <laughs> I'm a bit, I can see us, because we, mum and dad said, we'll walk up if you want to go up on your bikes. So my brother and I took our bikes. Mum and dad just walked, it's only on the opposite hill here. Um, and we went on our bikes, and you can see the bikes lying on the ground, sure it's us anyway. And I know I'm standing there in shorts with braces, you know, and my brother's got long trousers on. 1937, they were practising night flying in Gloucester Gauntlets from Kenley. And uh, they were going every night, and especially when the weather was fine, but it was dark, it had to be dark. and. Uh, I can remember that I was upstairs in the bathroom and my brother was in the back garden, I think, or but downstairs anyway. He saw what happened, or saw a flash and a, a fire up in the sky, and he called out to me, Ken, you know, come quick, as two gusts of gauntlets collided. We got ready and went tearing across Tollers Field down into Happy Valley, up through his Devil's Den woods, going towards this blazing fire. There were two aircraft involved, but this was the one that was on fire, so we could see where to run. The other one we didn't know anything about because it didn't catch fire. It was found near Doctor's Lane at Children, and it's said the pilot was found hanging out of his cockpit, but he was dead. So. But it wasn't on fire, so we didn't know it was there that, that night. Two farmers were there when we arrived, looking around the wreckage to see if there was anybody there and that they could help, or we might be past that. But um, the next day or afterwards, um, we heard that he had been found in a nearby wood, hanging from his parachute with his leg off, and he was dead also. His name was uh, Victor Keane and he's, he's buried actually at St Luke's. There's so much about the Battle of Britain. Um, usually fine weather, nearly always fine weather. Beautiful days we had, weather-wise. Vapour trails all over the skies, and you could hear them firing their guns up there. And, uh, I mean, going to school, we used to go to school on our bikes, and I was going to school at Catrum then. And as you were picking up um, bullet cases and things like that along the road, it, when they first, when it first started, it, all all the um, youngsters were trying to find them and keep them, you see, but after a while you didn't take any notice of them. Did you? you saw them as you were riding your bike, you didn't take any notice, you just carry on. <laughs> but they had to move out of the ops room on Kenny Airfield because the bombs had blown up all the cabling and they had no means of communication. So they took over this butcher's, part of the butcher's shop in Cateson Valley 
as a temporary measure. And then when they got more organised, they found uh, the Grange at Old Coulston, behind Old Coulston Church. They took that over. Do you have any particular recollections about the hardest day? Do you remember that? Were you here then? I imagine you were. Hmm. I can. I can remember every minute. First thing I knew was that um, the sirens went and uh, on that day, I should point out, lovely day, sun, a love, beautiful Sunday, and we had our relatives from Norwood and Thornton Heath coming. My mother was just about to put a joint on the table when the sirens went, so she had to said a few nasty words and put it back in the oven. <laughs> My father, when the bombs were falling, he thought we'd be nervous wrecks, my brother and myself. And, uh, he said, don't worry, he said, there are our guns going off. <laughs> so, but that, we knew that not to be true. <laughs>